Montana's news leader. This is the MTN 530 News. Disaster strikes south central Montana. Still water was anything but still. I mean, it was a raging beast. Streets transformed into rivers, bridges, highways, and homes washed away and destroyed. It's a terrible feeling to lose everything, but we're okay. All entrances to Yellowstone National Park closed to traffic, and much of the town of Red Lodge is completely underwater. I th and I think that's the hardest thing on people is not knowing anything. As crews scrambled to rescue dozens of Montanans stranded by the floodwaters, even more wild weather is headed our way. Your MTN News at 5.30 starts right now. Well, good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger coming to you from the banks of the Yellowstone River. As you see here behind me, the water in the Billings area already rising, but across much of the region, the flooding is already causing major problems. We have team coverage tonight as one town is underwater. A national park shut down. Mine workers and campers in need of rescuing and roads, bridges, and even some homes are being washed away. Uh, meanwhile, near nigh, as many as 80 miners and campers are stranded and being told to shelter in place overnight after the flooding and a sinkhole made that road impassable and treacherous. Arlena Howder has more on the efforts to get them back home. I'm standing on the Nye Bridge, one of the only bridges that's not completely covered with water in the area. Residents of the community of Nye have come together, helping each other evacuate from their flooded homes, hoping that the worst is behind them. Camping trips are often adventurous, but Justin Sheely never expected anything like what happened this weekend. Sheely, his wife, and five-year-old daughter were staying at Woodbine Campground when they were told they needed to evacuate. And we're just kind of going, wow, okay. Um... <laughs> <laughs> they and more than 60 other campers moved their vehicles to higher ground and started walking toward the river where they were met by search and rescue crews. Thus began a raft ride across the river to safety. Where we're seeing whole trees being swept underneath the bridge. My vehicle is in line with about two dozen other vehicles and campers and RVs there. And they weren't the only ones stranded. Just down the road at the Stillwater Mine, miners were also stranded. The road completely washed out. Residents in the area rushed to help their neighbors evacuate. It's something that you can't even dream about it because there's nobody that's ever seen this. Many piling sandbags to try and protect properties as the water crept closer to homes. We were trying to um, head the water off and, and from uh, this area right here so it wouldn't flood the homes back up in here. Lives thrown upside down and damage that will take a long time to repair. In Nye, Alina Howder, MTN News. A flooding event like no one's ever seen as the Stillwater and Rosebud Rivers rise and completely consume houses and evacuate residents. The Wilcox family homestead has been ranching the lands near the confluence of the Rosebud and Stillwater Rivers north of Absarki for six generations. And Wanda Wilcox only remembers one flood feeling as significant as today. I think it was 63. Our dad said come hell or high water, we had to get off the farm. And it was flooding, but not this bad. Monday morning, right. Wanda and her extensive family could call the homestead home were forced to evacuate as the rivers rose and flooded their homes. I got up at quarter to five. Something told me I heard a roar. And so I ran outside with my nightgown and looked and said, got my husband up and said, we got to get moving. We got to get out. And it just kept rising and rising and rising. Her son, Ty Wilcox, and his 11-year-old son, Stephen, took me to the flooded roads up to their property to get a first-hand look at the flood. Would you be here? My, of course, my yard, but this is the river now. This morning when we all woke up, we just realized that the river was really high. And then we kind of evacuated and we went up to where the river wasn't in our house. And just a little bit ago, our house started to flood. Down at the new bridge crossing the river on North Stillwater Road, area residents and passerby gathered to watch trees, debris, and even homes pass down the river. They will need a lot of help. We'll have to replace all the corrals and hopefully 
It doesn't take our houses. If it takes our houses, then I don't know what'll happen. It's a terrible feeling to lose everything, but we're okay. I mean, I'm okay in a wall tent, so I mean, I'm fine. I'll be fine. Lives are irreplaceable. Pictures, clothes, it doesn't matter. It's the lives that matters. Near Absorky Jackie Coffin, MTN News. We begin tonight in Red Lodge, normally one of the most beautiful places in the state this time of year, but tonight it is a mess as much of that town is underwater. Our Casey Conlon has more as residents rush to safety. This is the scene in Red Lodge. I'm on the corner of Broadway and 19th. There used to be a bridge right here running over Rock Creek. Now Rock Creek has completely overtaken it, washed it out as water continues to flow down Broadway into these buildings. It's just some of the massive damage it's already caused. And officials say, unfortunately, this may just be the beginning. This is going to be weeks. Uh, this is a significant uh, impact. The East Side Road Bridge just north of Rock Creek Resort was the first to fail Sunday night, but Red Lodge Fire Chief Tom Kuntz says that was just the beginning. Shortly we lost the uh, 19th Street Bridge, uh, then we lost the 9th Street Bridge. Chain of events began to happen so quickly it was difficult to keep up with. They have not seen the creek get this high in their memory and they've lived here all of their life. Um, so it's definitely a historic event. And that's bringing out the looky loos, which is causing disaster personnel all kinds of headaches. Our biggest message now is to please, please stay away from these waterways. Things are changing so rapidly. The bank could just drop away underneath you. Yeah, check back with us either at this number. An early command center is set up at the Carbon County Personal Services Building. Hundreds of homes and businesses have flood damage, but there are bigger problems now, starting with the town's power supply. The transmission lines, the bank that they're supported by has eroded and they're expecting that they're going to lose the transmission lines coming into our substation, which will result in complete loss of power throughout the community. Much of Red Lodge had lost power by mid afternoon Monday with no fix in sight. Due to the high stream flows, uh, Northwestern Energy is not sure what their ability will be to, to fix or replace that power line anytime soon. It's a crisis affecting almost everyone in this area. Our Haley Monaco has more. The evacuation center is set up here at the fairgrounds above town for the dozens and dozens of people who have been forced out of their homes from the east side of the Rock Creek. While they don't know when they will get to return home, they have been staying positive so far. I just come from really tough, resilient people, and so we just kind of carry on. Uh, but I said, as I said, wait until I have to walk into my house and see what the damage is. Lee Cooper has been at the fairground since 1.30 this morning. I think it was the police department. There was a bunch of guys in black sweatshirts with writing on the back, pounding on our door. They said we're asking everybody to leave. So we left with what we could have the presence of mind to gather up because we didn't know what was going to happen. Red Cross set up the evacuation center, offering water, food, and shelter. Though Lee is only utilizing the place for today, she is grateful for the community she's in. We feel like we're in a, a really good place in this country, in the world, to be in this small town where people care about each other. Those people include the community members who have been preparing and delivering sandbags since Sunday night and through Monday morning. I'm blown away. I'm absolutely blown away by the amount of people that are here. People from near and far are helping out the city. One family from Minnesota is even doing their part. We got enrolled in this morning and found out that um, things were happening. And in Minnesota, we're used to sandbagging. You know, we do it all the time. And sometimes people come from all over to help us. So thought we might as well find out where the action is. The family plans to spend time in Red Lodge until Sunday, and it looks like they'll have plenty to do. This is what you do. You know, that's what you do. We're all people. You know. In Red Lodge, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Well, Yellowstone National Park closed all of its entrances around 11 o'clock this morning. Park Superintendent Cam Shawley says the first priority was to evacuate the northern part of the park, where there are multiple road and bridge failures. 
The park also reports heavy flooding, rock slides, and extremely hazardous conditions. The Park Service also says power is out at numerous parts of Yellowstone, adding that roads in the southern part of the park are on the verge of being flooded. Park County has closed the Yellowstone River to any form of recreation, and it's easy to see why. This is video of the Tom Minor Bridge being swept away around 9 this morning. Other park communities, including Cook City and Silvergate, also saw flooding. Homes and businesses are underwater, and multiple bridges are washed out. Most residents of those communities evacuated this morning. Not a lot of problems reported yet here in the Billings area, but these waters here are expected to keep rising. And that's not the only concern that we have in coming days. We want to send it back to the studio now to check in with Chief Meteorologist Ed McIntosh. Ed? Russ, these are the areas we're watching right now, not only in the areas we've been talking about, but also some in Big Bighorn County, Montana, down to Sheridan County, Wyoming, and then this widespread flooding here as we start looking at these areas west of Billings. Unprecedented flooding into the Clarks Fork around Belfry and Edgar, also around Absorkey on the Stillwater, and of course what we've been talking about as we start to feed everything into the Yellowstone as we start to come downstream. Problem my area is already with Livingston hitting, again, unprecedented levels as the record level at 10.7 predicted to be 11.3 tonight heading into tomorrow. So the flooding around Livingston starts to move in towards Billings. That should take us to minor flood stage as we start getting into tomorrow afternoon. Things will start to ease up across the region, but that water travels downstream. And by the time we start looking around Miles City later on in the week, we're going to at least be approaching flood stage. A lot more weather coming up in just a few minutes. Much more coverage ahead as floodwaters hit southeastern Montana. Coming up next, we're going to head up the Yellowstone to Livingston, where rescue crews were busy on this Monday. You're watching the MTN News at 5.30 on Q2. The MTN 5.30 News continues right after this.